Happily Ever After Scrolls, Breaking News, and Chantasia on High Alert, Elva Cena FTRS. Saturday's Fairy Tale Reform School Ball ended in near disaster when the Wicked One herself, Elva, was said to be spotted in the school. One minute everyone was dancing to our single, No Me the One You're With. The next minute people were running, running for their lives, said Herbert Hughes, No More's lead singer, who broke his arm fleeing. The school's ballroom floor did crack in half, but rumors of a wolfman have not yet been confirmed. As soon as someone said Elva was there, everybody ran, said Margot Many, a troll from Galvington who had used her vacation money to see the princesses, and instead left with one shoe and a broken handbag. That wicked fairy is even more dangerous than Gotti. Sources tell Happily Ever After Scrolls that Gotti and Elva may be the same person, but we cannot confirm this news as of yet. All we know right now is that the Dwarf Squad is asking the community to be vigilant. Lock your doors, and if you see something unusual, say something, said Pete, chief of the Dwarf Police Squad. While Headmistress Flora has yet to comment on what really happened at the ball, the royal court is preparing for battle. If this truly is the work of Elva, we will bring her to justice, said Princess Snow. The same goes for Professor Harlow, who is found to be working with Elva and is currently being held in the FTRS dungeons. The professor's younger sister, Jocelyn, was questioned and released. Pegasus Postal Service, flying letters since the Troll War, from Anna Cobbler to Jillian Cobbler. Gilly, I don't understand you. When mother and father got word you were being released, I couldn't wait to go with them to pick you up. Han, Hamish, Trixie, and Felix were decorating for your welcome home party. How could you stay and let us all of us down? Everyone was in tears when we came home without you. Do you have any idea how hard things have been without you? Money is tighter than ever. Father lost business when people found out his daughter had been hauled off to FTRS. Mother took on a second job as a seamstress, but there's still not enough to get by. I thought we could hold on to your return, but I have no idea when that will be. And the only way I can talk to you is by scroll now that Enchantasia is on lockdown because of Elva. Thanks, Gilly, for nothing. Anna. From Gil Jillian Cobbler to Anna Cobbler. Anna Banana. Please don't be mad at me. Being stuck at FTRS has made me see that doing the easy thing is not always the right thing. It kills me to hear how hard life has been for you guys, but be strong. There has to be another way to get food. Ask Nomolia if you can work at one afternoon after school and take home stale bread. Or talk to Combing the Sea about helping sell the Rapunzel line. You're a natural salesperson. You even had me wanting her shampoo. Help father think up an even cooler shoe than a glass slipper. Then everyone will be begging for his foot apparel. In here, I've learned stealing can't be a career. That's why I have to stick around FTRS for a while, to learn what I'm good at so I can have a job to help you all when I get out. I was as selfish as a pixie before FTRS, but I promise next time you see me, you're going to be proud. That's something I want more than anything in this world. Love, Gilly Bean. Chapter 19, the end or the beginning. It took almost a week for the FTRS crew to clean up the mess left behind by Elva. It took another for the students to be allowed to leave their dorm rooms unaccompanied by a teacher, which was tough since there wasn't enough staff left to cover the students. Harlow was in the dungeons. Madame Cleo was on a month-long spiritual retreat near the Enchanted Sea. Professor Wolfington had disappeared. Most of the students I knew still didn't understand what had happened. They were rattled, and they hadn't had to fight Sleeping Beauty's tormentor. It was time to get some answers, and there was only one person still around to give them, Headmistress Flora. The day we were allowed to roam the halls freely again, we made a beeline for Flora's office. Painters and workers were still hanging new art, painting walls, and cleaning rugs. The area of the school near the ballroom was off limits due to debris and unstable ground. For now, we were being schooled in the main building. Headmistress Flora insisted life get back to normal as quickly as possible, but we all knew things were anything but normal. Come in, said the wicked stepmother when we knocked on her door. I was going to have Miri call you down so I could talk to you myself. Please, have a seat. I haven't been in Flora's office since the day I stole a scroll to see what she had planned for the ball. Before that, I was there the day I arrived at FTRS. I think I'll stand. Flora nods. Understandable. She threads her fingers together. I believe you all have some questions for me. The five of us start talking at once. Flora holds up her hand. Maybe I should go first, she suggests, and runs a hand through the tight bun in her hair. I assume you want to know if your teachers were working with Elva. The room is so quiet, you can hear Maxine's patent leather shoes tapping. Well, the answer is yes, Maxine inhales sharply, just not in the way you think. 
Laura rises and steps around her desk, much as she did the day I arrived at FTRS. Her dark gray gown makes her look like she's in mourning. We knew she had things planned for the Royals and Enchantasia. We just didn't know what. We met with her when we could in the hollow woods, making it seem as if we were ready to join forces with her. Sadly, it seems Professor Harlow wanted to for real. She looks at me intently. This was not a matter we wanted our students entangled in. Your safety is our utmost concern, and going up against Elva at the ball was foolish. She purses her lips. That said, without you and Professor Wolfington, none of us might be here today. Are you going to tell happily ever after scrolls how awesome we were? Ollie asks eagerly, rubbing his arm where it was bandaged after Jocelyn's shield singed him. Or pardon us and let us leave early like Harlow was going to do with Gilly? Headmistress Flora shakes her head. I'm afraid that wouldn't be wise. Elva knows who you are now, and the safest place for you is here at FTRS with us. Elva is coming for me. She pretty much said that, and no one I know is safe until she's taken care of. I think of how we fared against her when we worked together. Kayla's wings got damaged from Harlow's magic, and she won't be flyable for a while. Maxine got away with a light, slight concussion. I have some more nicks and bruises, and Jack said some rocks fall on him during the explosion. He's on crutches. Still, we're alive. Have you heard from Professor Wolfington, Maxine asks. I always liked him, even if he did try to bite me in the dungeon. Laura shakes her head. He'll resurface when he's ready. I know he's inconsolable about letting his dark side out. It isn't easy letting the world see the monster you once were and hope to never be again. Professor Harlow has no problem with that, I mumble. Laura raises an eyebrow. No, I'm afraid she doesn't. Hence her living assignment in the dungeon until further notice. I can't believe you let Jocelyn go, Jax complains. She practically let Harlow kill Gilly. Jocelyn is a troubled girl. Flora agrees, but she has assured me she was not aware of her sister's actual doings with Elva. We start to protest, but Flora cuts us off. Until I know otherwise, it's my job to believe her. She will stay here as a student, under my watchful eye, of course. I'm not sure that's smart, but we have bigger problems than Jocelyn. No one knows when Elva will strike again or what she has planned next. Jax hasn't been able to find out anything from his father. He made us swear not to blow his cover with Flora. For now, we have to keep some secrets of our own. I'm sure the former wicked stepmother is doing the same. My job is to watch over all of my students, including you, Kayla. Laura puts her hand on Kayla's shoulder. I know all about your deal with Rumpelstiltskin, and I promise that together we will find a way to lift the spell on your family. Kayla tears up. Thank you. So what's our next move, I ask. Your next move is to go back to being students, Flora says. Take a day off from all these dark doings and have fun. Fun? We look at her like she's grown three heads. Miri, tell them what I have planned, Flora says. Miri's brass mirror begins to glow. There's a picnic lunch set up in the garden and a game of dodgeball waiting to be had in the courtyard, which has just been cleared of debris. And I'm told the ice cream is melting, so you don't want to wait too long to get out there. I'm up for that, Ali cheers. Good. Now go before I change my mind and have you write a paper, Laura chokes. I never thought I'd see the day. Oh, but first, I have something for Jillian. She pulls a note with a royal seal out of her desk drawer. We gather round to read it. Miss Jillian Cobbler, thank you for your help once again in keeping evil at bay. Laura has told us of your father's shoemaking woes. Because of that, we would like to commission all glass slippers for the royal palace from, this, from his shop from now on, Princess Ella. Wow, does that mean someone in the royal family is actually nice? Jack says, feigning shock as he shifts from one crutch to the other. Who would have thought that would happen? I give him a look. Thanks, I say, blushing as I look at our headmistress. I'm sorry for calling you a step monster and for, you know, thinking you were all villain again. I still have a lot of questions, though. Flora looks mildly amused. Apology accepted, and I promise to answer more of your questions when, you pro when your professors are back. You know, Jillian. Villains think they have the power, but the mistake they always make is the same. They have no idea how to use it. She scratches her chin. True power is learning how to put others first, not judge a book by its cover, so to speak. I think you're doing a good job of that here at FTRS, she pauses. But you still have a way to go before your stay is up. That's okay, I say. I don't mind it here anymore. Miri's mirror starts to glow again. Laura, call from the castle. Are you free to talk to Rapunzel? Yes, please. P please put her on hold, Miri. Flora points to the door. Now all of you go and let me worry about villains for the rest of the day. I watch Miri's mirror glow green, then purple, and I close the door.
Ice cream, Ali asks. From curses and villains to ice cream, Maxine says as her eye droops. Kind of a boring afternoon, don't you think? We walk toward the doors leading outside. When Ollie opens them, I bask in the warm sunlight on my face and the sound of laughter in the meadow. Balloons and bright pink tablecloths on the tables blow in the wind. As far as the eye can see, trolls, gnomes, fairies, ogres, and even the merfolk have come up to sit on rocks at the lake nearby. It's nice to see everyone in a good mood. They're happy. At reform school. Who would have guessed it? I look to the right of the castle and see the crumbling exterior walls of the ballroom that are being redone. I could use boring right now. Me too, says Kayla. For a moment, her wings appear, battered but resilient, and then they're gone again. I know it won't be long before they reappear, or I want to snag something we could use in battle, or Jax and Ali sweet-talk their way into some intel we could use. The hollow woods lie in the distance, looking ominous and full of secrets that Maxine can't wait to uncover, like where Elva's hiding, and how desperately a trapped Harlow wants to help her. But... Those are all questions for another day. Dudes, come on, they've got vanilla and chocolate. Ollie's reached the ice cream table and is already dishing it out. The ice cream oozes over the sides of the cups on the table. Let's go be bored together, I say, squeezing Jack's tight as we head for the melted ice cream, an afternoon bound to give us the best kind of bellyache.